So I got a call today from families, which is happening like five to 10 a day. 90% of the calls are not so bad and I don't take the case. And I want to tell you about this story that I did not take because the kid has um, a few mental illness diagnoses, but the kid is from, and I only deal with kids who are not from, but they are clow. And the parents are describing to me, listen, you know, he's miserable. He's in a bad mood all the time. He's bossing around his mother. Mama, she said, we don't want to say such, uh, such words, but he's like, Mama, like a tough, like, a, like, you know, beating up on everybody. And nobody's comfortable in the whole house. We can't live like this. And he's lazy, and he's, uh, he won't pick up after himself, and he won't flush the toilet, and he won't throw away his laundry. And, you know, we can't, and he, he doesn't go to sleep on time, and he gets very chutzpahdik, and, and every time I tell him, why aren't you going to bed, and come on, and I try to give him, he gets very angry. And he's, he's not in school, right, because he, he doesn't go to sleep at night, so he doesn't wait, but he's, he's from, he's not, he's not off the derech, and he's, he's young, but he has, and he has these depression, anxiety, and three, four um, diagnoses. I told the parents as follows, and I think it's going to help everybody and a lot of other people who can hear this. I said, I can't take the case because I, I only deal with the category of the derech, and you need to find somebody who's going to be able to help you. I just want to tell you in my experience certain things. I'm not giving you hadracha. I just want to open up your eyes to certain concepts, and, and you'll see how, how, how to apply it. I told them, do you realize that your son is sick? Do you realize that depression is a sickness? Do you realize that anxiety is a sickness? Do you realize that all these things, it's a mental illness diagnosis is a sickness. Do you, can you acknowledge that it's a sickness? I told him, do you realize that if your child had cancer, it would be an upgrade for him? So many kids say, I wish I had cancer. If you saw an x-ray with, with something on it, look how his life would change. Everybody would be on his side, and everybody would be saying, Oh, Shefila, what can I get for you? What can I do for you? You wouldn't have any expectations. You wouldn't be upset at him. You wouldn't judge him. You wouldn't be negative about him. You wouldn't be surrounding him in this aura of, Why can't you behave? Why can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you? <coughs> what do you mean, why can't I? Cancer. I said, Not only that, if he just had fever, we would be automatically on his side. If he had 102 fever, you wouldn't ask him, why'd you sleep all day? Why didn't you get up in the morning? Why'd you come down like that? Why, 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 why? You wouldn't have pressure. You wouldn't be pressuring him. You wouldn't have expectations. You wouldn't think, oh, of course he has Bechira. Everyone has Bechira. Not a sick person. So you're surrounding him by a bunch of eyes that are constantly judging him. You could do better. You're lazy. You're bad. You're stupid. That's what your messages are saying. And that's what he's feeling. And because you're not treating his illness like a real illness, he feels it, and therefore he's really angry and frustrated at everybody. He's in pain because not only he lost his life, he's not in school, he's not going to camp, he has no friends, he has no future, he can't get married, he doesn't see life being happy, and he has a lot of pain. The Gemara says, any chayla chutz mechayla reish. Give me anything in the world, but not a headache. All of his pain is in his head. And you think you could do better? You think while you're falling down the flight of stairs, yeah, but you can clean up your room. His life is being destroyed. And, and, and they said, yeah, but he looks, like, he looks like a regular person. Right. Chayla Nefesh is real. It destroyed his life and you're still judging him. His life was destroyed by illness. Don't let, don't let his life be even worse by losing a father and by losing a mother. And the mother, as usual, it's usually the mom started crying. I knew it. You're the first person to tell us this. Every person we go to is telling us consequences and boundaries, and we shouldn't give him a finger. He's going to take a hand. He's a manipulator. So why are we turning on your kid? The kid has cancer, and all of a sudden he's in a bad mood. All of a sudden you forgot who he was. You don't remember he was sweet and smart and sensitive. You're turning on your kid. Everybody told them that. And what happened after they followed their advice? The kid got worse. Why don't you go back to the therapist, the professional, and say, hello, we followed your advice, we told him this is not acceptable, and it got worse. And now, the house is worse. You know how bad the matzah was? They told me that they're holding by sending him out of the house. Because how could you live like this? Because every advice that they got escalated the situation. 
They took a kid who was a little miserable and they made him more miserable and more miserable and now you're going to throw him out of the house. And nobody, no chachamim out there were able to tell them the five minute speech that I gave them. She said, you just changed our whole life. And the husband, <laughs> you know any husbands? We don't get it. He's busy, angry and embarrassed and this and that and whatever. And he says, okay, I hear, but we can't live like this. We can't live like this. We have to throw him out of the house. He's ruining the whole house. So I said, Rabid, if you would treat him like your wife wanted to treat him, not the way she did. She, she was being held back. She told me, everybody was holding me back. I wanted to nurture my child. I wanted to be there. Everybody was saying, no, don't let him manipulate you. When, he, when did he become Ace of Harasha? When did he become Yishmael? How come every time that a professional and many Askanim out there are faced with a kid who's, who's misbehaving and, and upset, why is it always fight fire with fire? Why not hang on? Something's wrong with this kid. Don't let him lose his father and his mother. And why aren't they responsible when a month later the kid is acting worse and worse and worse and worse? And then you call them, oh, this is crazy. Call 911. Really? You took a kid with fever and you went from 100 to 101, 102, 103, 104, and now we can't live with him? And you're never thinking about maybe unraveling? No, how can we unravel? Don't enable him. Don't let him get away with it. So I said, Rabid, if you would treat your child the way your wife wants to, the way she's going to from today on. And everyone in the family had Rachmanus on him, as Racham, Chanan, Erechapayim. Treated him like we would naturally treat any chayla, even just with fever. The kid comes to the Shabbos table in his pajamas. And your friend says, that's the way you let him come to the Shabbos table? You say, no, no, he has fever. Oh, he has fever. No problem. No, but it's not good for the other kids. All the kids are going to come pajamas to the Shabbos table. No. But it's already three years that he's sick. So now everybody's going to think that it's okay to be like that. No. Why would anybody want to act sick? They've seen you come to the Shabbos table. They've seen their grandparents come to the Shabbos table. And everybody's wearing pants. Why do you think everyone's going to follow the kid who's, who's coming in, in, in? Right? Why? No. You explain to them. She's sick. And we do this naturally if it's fever. But when it comes to I want to die... I want to cut myself, I hate life, I have no future, my life is in crisis, we're like, no, we can't let that happen. Everyone's going to follow. We have to have rules, we have to have boundaries, we have to have consequences. I'm not against that if it would work. But when it doesn't work after a month, two, three, four, five, and all of a sudden this kid is angry. I said, not only he's sick and his life is ruined, you took away his father. You took away his support system. Until somebody tells you that 100% you need to be mean now, and it's going to make him better. Now, go to our natural state. What's our natural state? Rachmanim b'nei Rachmanim. Maminim b'nei Maminim. What's Rachmanim? B'nei Rachmanim? Are we also? Yeah? Was there a state? Huh? Rachmanim b'nei Shanim b'nei Chasadim. Go back to Had Beik Pimidais V'Shal Kaddish Baruch Hu Mahu Rachma Fatavei Racham. Go back to our natural Al-Tadines Chavercha Ad Shetagilam Kaimai. Tell your siblings, tell your other kids and say, listen, I, I, was never, I was never diagnosed with depression. So I guess that's what it does. No. I don't know what depression is. I won't even read an article about it. But that has no connection to this. All the angry people out there. Mean. Mean people. No. I don't care what they say. This is no, no, this is bad behavior. Say, I don't know. I just know that depression, anxiety, OCD, ODD, MP3, all of these things are all things that I don't know about. And therefore, until I become a mumcha, I'm going to assume that, look what it does, it makes you grouchy. Yeah, it makes you selfish. It makes you, no, they're not manipulating you. They'll tell everybody, clean up, and they'll sit there, uh, they can't clean up. That's part of the sickness. I'll write down the way my child is behaving, because I know my child was good, and I'll say everything that they can't do, I'll blame it on the disease, I'll blame it on the sickness. Why do you blame it on your child? Why do you think all of a sudden they have bad midos? These kids don't have bad midos. The parents and the therapists and me and all adults, we have bad midos. They're just hurting kids and nobody's giving them the benefit of the doubt. Al-Tadin es chavercha ad shetagia limkaimai means that until you become an expert that you could feel their pain, you don't judge them. Because every time you say, why can't you flush the toilet? Why can't he put away his things? What you're saying to Hashem is, give me all of their tsar. I think I could do better. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to come back in the next Gilgal with what they're going through.
Now, why do we struggle with this so much? Because it didn't exist when we were kids. Chayl and Nefesh did not exist. Kids weren't killing themselves when we were kids. The world changed, and we're not used to it. So we judge. Can't be that you're good. Look at you. Every time I give you something, give you a finger, you take a hand. And that's the problem, that when we were kids, this didn't really exist. It did, but it was under, under the covers a little bit, under the blanket, under the carpet. And certainly not like today. Today we have an emotional holocaust. We have kids who are hurting. Everybody who's dealing with kids at risk, kids who are off the derech, will all tell you that they're in pain. All of them. Last night we had over here from the Beit Sion, dealing for 30 years with thousands of kids, literally. Did you ever meet a kid who wasn't in pain and chose a derech? I think, I think I have a very nice way to live my life. I think I'll be lazy, I'll sleep during the day, I'll be up at night, and I'll do drugs. I think that's going to be matzliach. It doesn't work like that. And they get the iPhones and the, and the internet only because they're going crazy and they need to numb themselves. They're not deflated and dysfunctional because of that. Anyway, so the point was for this family that called me today. I told them, take the side of your kid. And you'll see if you surround your child with a bunch of eyes that are compassionate to him and don't look down at him, it will de-escalate your problem. You're not going to be thinking, I want to throw my kid out of the house. You'll be saying, I have a kid here that's my focus, that Hashem gave us, who's nebuch dysfunctional, who's nebuch sick, and we're davening every single day that he should have a refu on a Yeshua, and in the meantime, it's our schus to care for him, and when he gets up, it's breakfast time, even if it's 6 p.m., and whatever he needs, we will be here for him, and we'll make him smile, and we'll make him laugh, and we'll nurture him. Why is this so hard? How many thousands of families out there are struggling with this? Kids have Asperger's, and kids have mental illness, and kids have other stuff. And they're constantly causing their kid to behave worse by treating the kid badly, by judging the kids and thinking, you could do better, you could do better, you could do better. Say that to yourself, not to somebody else. You can do better, you can do better. You want to push yourself, push yourself. People say, what, you shouldn't push anybody? You need to know when you push somebody else. Tzadikim didn't push, they pulled. They, they, they motivated you. They didn't push you. It's the mamish bad mentality that knows what somebody else should be doing. Let's see you make yourself better. No, 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 I can't. It's harder to change one meter, Rabbi Yisrael Salanta said, than learning shas. Me, I can't work on myself, but I can tell you what to do. I can tell you what you're doing wrong, but you don't know his reality. You don't know her pain. You don't understand their lack of koiches. You don't understand what it's like to not see a future they don't see a wedding. They don't see having children. They can't do this thing called life. And now you're going to go ahead and judge them. Because you know what you would do if you would be them. Rabbi say, if you would be them, you wouldn't have the koiches you have now. That would be stripped of you. You would have their koiches, and they can't. They can't. So they're grumpy, and they're grouchy, and they look selfish. Give them, and smile, and nurture them, until somebody, Mamash Moshe Rabbeinu Eliyahu Nabi tells you not to. Right? That's what you need to do. So I told them, on yourself you say, push, push, push. But on somebody else, you're not allowed to say that. Somebody has a broken leg, after it heals, the physical therapist knows three steps, four steps. Come on, I'll push you. They're not pushing for one step more than you can do because your foot will break. But you do not, you're not a physical therapist. So you have no idea. Push, 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 push. You have no idea. You don't know what they're capable of doing. So if you push, 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 you'll get it right sometimes. One time you get it wrong, you'll re-break the leg. You'll break the trust. The kid will say, I can't trust you. You don't mean me. You just want to see me active and you want to see me. They don't think that we care about them, which is the biggest mistake in the world, because we will die for them. But they don't care about that because you're not living for them. They don't care how many people are going to cry at their funeral. They don't care about that. They want you to, to, to look at them with trust and love and not judgment. And that's what you have to work on yourself. You have to say to yourself, I don't look down at my kid. I don't look down at those who are struggling. I don't think I could do better than them if I was them, if I had their pain and their weakness. Maybe you went through pain and you were resilient. It's a gift from Hashem. It doesn't mean that everybody else will be resilient. You could have gone through worse than them. So one kid gets hit on the bike by a car, he gets up and he drives away. The other kid falls in the wrong spot, he's paralyzed. So you're gonna look down at him because he's paralyzed and say, well, I got hit by a truck, huh? Look at me. You got lucky. 
You had resilience. Hashem protected you. Hashem let you use your pain to motivate you. Beautiful. That's for you, but you can't tell that to somebody else. You have no right to tell somebody else that your pain in your life should motivate you. Let them say it on themselves. So just today I was on the phone with a sibling. The sibling was telling me I had depression and I went through all kinds of stuff and now I got out of depression and you know what helped me a job and my brother doesn't have a job. He needs to get a job and he needs to get off of his sleeping off of his you know what and he needs to get motivated and, he need, and, that, and I'm telling you because it worked for me. Good speech. So you know what I told her? A day before you were ready to get yourself out of depression, if anybody would have told you that speech, would it have worked? Even five minutes before it wouldn't have worked. It's true that working pulls you out of depression, but you have to have the kayak to work. You have the kayak to go to the gym. And then, yes, going to the gym makes you feel great. You would not have accepted the speech from anybody until you were ready for the speech to work for you. So giving your brother that speech that worked for you before he's ready is irrelevant. You're not thinking about his reality. He's not holding where you were. And guess what happens when they are at the place that that speech would work? Guess what? You don't need to give them the speech because they know it. They know it just like you know it and it's in them. And as soon as they can, they will. They don't even need the speech. But when you go to somebody before they can and you give them that speech, you know what you do? You stab them. You kill them. They feel like a loser. They know that you think I could and I'm not. You go to someone who's 100 pounds overweight, you say, you know, you should go to the gym and go on the treadmill, go on a diet. Yeah, you're going to feel really good about yourself. Really, I never knew that. No one ever told me that before. I didn't realize. You think if I could, I would want to look like this? Everybody wants to look skinny, and I can't. So sometimes there is in the world something called motivation, and it works. But everybody just uses it all the time for everybody. And most of the time, it's extremely painful and hurtful. You have to know when the person is ready to hear it. You have to be in their world, when you can give a little push, how you can help them out, that's fine. Motivate all the way. But when you go to someone who's not up to that and you try to motivate them, you know what you're doing? You're giving musr, you're giving techacha, you're telling them they're a loser, and it actually causes them to be able to do it less. To be able to do it less. They say, forget it. And they disconnect from you, and instead of energizing them, you pull out the plug and you cause them to be suffering for longer. So for all the people who I can't take, who are nebuch dealing with children and relatives with mental illness and with other types of problems, until somebody proves to you that being tough and strong is going to make them better now and not make them worse and not make you eventually hate them and want to cut them out of your life, until then, don't do it. Because you can go to Hashem and you could say, Hashem, I don't know how to help this person. So until I know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be godly. I'm going to go in the Yud Gimel Midas HaRachamim. Hadvik Mimidei Sashal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Halachta Bidrachov. That's the default. The default is, I'm going to be like Hashem. If I have to change out of my default, I'm willing to go into a very uncomfortable place and slam the door on someone if I believe and Hashem tells me that that's what I need to do. But until then, if I'm not sure what to do, I'm not just going to be mean. I'm not just going to say, I'm sorry, you can't, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to realize with compassion that something's going on here with this kid. And especially you have the diagnosis or you know that there was a trauma. There was a girl who was never raped at six years old. Eight years later, she's freaking out, going crazy. And the father says, it's eight years later, get over it. He's, an igno he's ignorant. He's an ignoramus. It's just Pasha to ask anybody who understands how this works. You can't get over it. Shkayach, get over it. We'll take you, we'll rape you, we'll see you get over it. Saying things when you're not an expert in the field is ignorant. And the danger of ignorant people is they hurt a lot of people. So the default is compassion and mercy. Whatever is going to happen in the future, you say, Hashem, there's three shutfim, Mami, Tati, and you. Mami and Tati are going to be compassionate and merciful until we have a reason not to. Okay, and all those reasons that you think are not, that's not what I'm talking about. We're going to be showering this kid who's suffering with pain. What's the opposite of pain? Pleasure. A kid with a mental illness diagnosis, Rahman al how much pain is in his brain? Undeserved. So he's, he, he doesn't deserve undeserved fun? Give him undeserved pleasure, undeserved, you're not going to spoil him. You're just going into his brain. 
he's, he's minus a million dollars. Give him, give him a million dollars. You have so much ability to help people by undoing the pain in their brain with pleasure and fun. That's actually helpful. And that's not a dangerous thing to do. That should be the focus. And surrounding them by people who don't look down at them. Then you end up with a grouchy, grumpy person because his life is ruined, but not somebody who's going to pull a knife on you, and not someone who's going to be hurting themselves, hopefully. And whatever's going to happen, at least you know it's the pain, it's not you. So, I had two calls today with the same type of discussions. Both of them I couldn't help, but I hope at least they're not going to ruin their relationship with their kid and then find that afterwards, oops, it wasn't the right thing to do. Shem Yerachim. is falling apart. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. So much diagnosis out there. Can you imagine our parents never had to go to a therapist with us, never had to go to a psychiatrist, there was never a diagnosis. And now parents have to deal with this. One kid has this, and one kid has this, and one kid has Asperger's, and one kid has a learning disability, and one kid has this. It's unbelievable what's happening, the struggles in the brain that our kids are having. And the only thing they have is you. No matter what, don't let them lose Tati and Mommy. Is that too much to ask for? Tati and mommy, you are there for life. Like this guy in yeshiva said, sometimes you got to throw a kid out. I said, yeah, because you're a yeshiva. You're not a tati and a mommy. Tati and mommy are stuck with this kid forever. We got to always have the right answer to keep them going for the rest of their life, being a source of energy for them, like a Gersh and Edelstein taught us, to be a source of energy, to give them the energy to, to, to fight for their life, and eventually to give us nachas.